Would you turn in your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. Message bringing to you today is simply called a holy calling. A holy calling. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. We'll be looking at verses that also surround it, but we'll be focusing mainly on verse 9. As you know, it's a, the last letter that Paul wrote. He's writing it to a young pastor named Timothy, as you're well aware of, and as the letter is titled, 2 Timothy. And he says in chapter 1, verse 9, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Talk about the Lord having a plan in place, yes? Before time began, a plan, a purpose was established. Already in the heavens, everything was established, a plan and a purpose, that Christ would come forth and that there would be many sons to glory, as we just sang. That God Almighty, before time began, meaning time had a beginning, yes? And if time had a beginning, then time will have an end. When all things are wrapped up, as, as John 6, 44, when he talks about and says that, that the, the last day, the last day, there is a last day, is there not? There's a last day before time began, and the last day. And what are we doing in between? From the time where the, the time began, and the time of the last day, and in all eternity, and in the midst of all of that that takes place, here's my little dash. Yes? Where's your little dash? That little dash where you were drawing breath. When you first took your breath, and then the last breath that you take. And your little dash is found somewhere in the great plan of God. And here we find that Paul is writing to Timothy, this tremendous young pastor, this young man, this man of God. Oh, that every young man could be a man of God. Oh, how I pray and I call for young men to rise up and be young men of God that are focused on the things of the Lord. Here we have... Paul writing to Timothy with a father's charge. That's really what it is. It's a father's charge. He calls him even a beloved son. He says in scripture and he calls him a beloved son. Even though he's not of his natural birth, the son of the faith. And he says to, in 1 Corinthians 4, 7, he says, Timothy, my beloved and faithful son in the Lord. He's referring to him. He's writing to the Corinthians and he's sending Timothy and he's referring to him and he calls him. He says, Timothy, my beloved and faithful son in the Lord. To be a faithful son in the Lord. To be called faithful. To be able to understand and recognize that God is bringing in us faithfulness. To be faithful. Faithful to the Word of God. Faithful to the Spirit of God. Faithful to the plan of God. Faithful to the purposes of God. Faithful people. Faithful son in the Lord. He says in 1 Timothy, Chapter 1, verse 2, he says, a true son in the faith. A true son. To be not only a faithful son, but now what? A true son in the faith. Someone who is true. Someone who has truth birthed in them and is living that truth. Oh my goodness, would I love to see more people being a true son of the faith. Yes. One who lives for the faith, who has been birthed in the faith, that the author and the finisher of faith birthed that Holy Spirit, that new creation in you, and that faith come forth, and that you are a true son in the faith. One who simply believes God, as we just heard from Pastor Adam, to believe God and to come forth and recognize that your life must be built according to the cornerstone of Jesus Christ, and all things are being done for the kingdom of God, and your life has been surrendered to Him, and you belong to Him, and your new identity is in Him. He also says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, this very chapter that we're in right now. He says, when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you. The genuine faith that is in you. Put, just put these together. Beloved and faithful son in the Lord. A true son in the faith. A beloved son. And the genuine faith that is in you. Yes? That right there should be encouragement to all of us saying, that's what I'm going to be. What do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, I remember as a kid always saying, what, you, what do I want to do? What am I going to be? Where am I going to go? Boy, did God have a plan. All these questions. I'd go down in the basement to my mother and say, what am I going to do? What am I going to be? 
What am I going to do with my life, bewildered and aimless and going, trying this, trying that? And of course, pride has its, had its plans for me. And of course, lust had its plans for me. And of course, deceiver had his plans for me. And all of these voices I listened to, and I had all these plans of becoming a success, and I was going to own this and do that and accomplish this. And God Almighty had a completely different plan. He was going to make me a true son in the faith. Isn't that what God's plan and purpose is for you? To make you true, a true believer. A faithful person to the kingdom of God. I mean, Paul writes to him, and how does he know that it's a genuine faith? Well, because Timothy must have told him. Timothy must have said, I have genuine faith. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. That, mu that must be the way it is. And that's what the kind of faith that we're seeing today in today's church. That I have faith. And defiantly tell people, and you're to tell me I have faith. How does Paul know he's a genuine faith, a true son and beloved? Faith can be seen. When someone believes God and has faith, it shows up in their life. As that fine book, uh, what's a uh, face of faith? I don't know who wrote it, but it's tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you what it looks like. Yes? yes? Yes. Somebody online right now is probably saying, what's he talking about? It's a book that I wrote, The Face of Faith. <laughs> Available at. So. <laughs> faith can be seen. But also, faith didn't just happen. Timothy just didn't all of a sudden just land and, and, and come and just say, uh, Okay, Lord. Oh, there it is. Like this. I always like what Jill wrote. Said, See, I'm, I like your desk. I like that. <laughs> the pixie dust. Like, faith doesn't just happen. Like, oh, you want some faith? Ding a ding a ding. You, oh, ding a ding a ding. You want some faith? Some, everybody who wants faith, come. Ding a ling, and just, oh, you're going to leave. I, I got it, I got it, like your little schoolgirl. <laughs> faith comes by pounding it to bedrock. Faith comes by plowing the, 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 the ground up. Faith comes by confrontation and correction and admonishment and rebuke and rebuff. Faith doesn't just happen. Faith is birthed forth and developed and matured. And then you come to a place where you develop, mature, and come to be established in Christ Jesus. Well, did Timothy just say, okay, well, that's what I'm going to do? No. You look at Scripture and it says, Lois, your mother Lois, and your mother Eunice. Oh, there's people involved. People involved. And let me ask you this question. Where's Frank and Fred? Now you're saying, what? Hey, there's Lois and Eunice. I don't know who the fathers are. We don't know. Where's Frank and Fred? Where's Harry and Thomas? Where, where are the husbands, the fathers? Where are the men? That's the father's charge. And where they were absent, Paul steps in. God provides. God provides. God provides. Amen. And you say, true son in the faith. So many men today, bewildered, perplexed, and weak in the faith, and lazy towards their spirituality. That's the father's charge. Instead of going after, where are, where's the father and the grandfather? No, it's Lois and Eunice. So on this Father's Day, thank God for Lois and Eunice who raised up a man named Timothy. A man named Timothy. A man of faith, a true son in the faith. Paul saw faith in him and he's encouraging him and saying, don't, don't withdraw from the faith. He's telling him, saying, God has not given you a spirit of fear and timidity, verse 7. That's not the Lord has given you that drawing back and hiding and falling away and questioning and bewildered and perplexed and, and not sure. And, and he says, do not be ashamed of me or the gospel. He says in verse 8, therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of his prisoner. Meaning, Paul. He's writing this from the prison house. He's in Rome and writing from the prison house. And he says, don't be ashamed. In other words... Timothy's struggling, yes? He's struggling about the affliction that Paul's suffering, about the testimony, about the hard times, about the face of clay gnarling at him. Do you know how many faces I've had gnarl at me? Look at you, roll the eyes, tongue in cheek, roll. Oh my goodness. The scorn, the mocking, and all that goes on with it and stuff. And even from, even from Christians who so-called come to church and want Jesus, but they don't want his Holy Spirit. 
And coming to that place where he says that therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony. He says in verse 12, For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, what's he say in verse 12? I am not ashamed. Yeah. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the power of God to salvation. All by believing. God made it so easy for us. Believe God. I'm not ashamed. I'm not shrinking back. Remember the sermon on a bold love? This woman, a sinner, a sinful woman, the Pharisee, that's a sinner. She's a sinner in here. And she comes in with a bold love. Remember that sermon? And she comes in with a bold love. And she doesn't shrink back and go along the side of the walls and look for permission if it's okay. A bold love moves her and she just goes right to the feet of Jesus. And starts gushing tears to the point where she can wash his feet with her tears. Thankful. Loving, calling upon, worshiping, aligning, and did not care about the snarls and the scorns and the mocking that took place around her. Her face was focused on Jesus. Amen. The feet of Jesus. A bold love. She wasn't ashamed. Oh God Almighty, we have so many shrinking back from the gospel of Jesus Christ. Parents shrinking back, don't want to confront, don't want to correct, don't want to admonish, want to be careful, don't want to offend. Well, I'm hoping they'll hear. You drive that faith to bedrock, just as Lois did, just as Eunice did. I wonder if there was any confrontations teaching Timothy the faith. Just based on what I've seen in my own life and in church history, and as you read in the Bible, you'll find out that it comes by confrontation. It comes by correction. It comes by admonishment. Well, who is he? People would even say, as I correct or admonish, or rebuke or rebuff or, re or whatever the course is needed. Well, he spoke harshly to me. No kidding. You want to see harsh? Wait till you meet my father. Wait till all of a sudden he says, you have no part in me. Well, you're being harsh. So I said, light to darkness and darkness to light. Dark cries all day long. You're being harsh to me. Oh, you're being harsh to me. And tries to find a corner to hide in. Darkness is always hiding, always running, always fleeing. Always withdrawing, always trying to find something to block the gospel of Jesus Christ. Trying to deflect it in some way. No, not that. It can't be this. I don't like that church. Yeah, that's your deflection so you can do what you want. The gospel of Jesus Christ is coming forth. And he is coming. And he says, I'm not, don't be ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the testimony. You don't be ashamed of the testimony. Why? Because it's a holy calling. Not to be despised, not to be diminished. Faith lives by the holy calling. Hear me now. Faith lives by the holy calling. He says there in, 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 in uh, verse 9, who saved us and called us with a holy calling. It's holy. The invitation has gone out. The voice of God from heaven has come forth. Hear me now. The voice of God from heaven has come forth. God has sent out his invitation. Come. Jesus said, come all who weary and are heavy laden. Come. The Revelation says, the spirit and the bride say, come. come. The call is always, come. Even these altar, come. All down through the ages. What did Jesus say to his disciples? Follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. I'll change your life. The Holy Spirit has a purpose and a plan for you. What's going on in life? God is unfurling, unfolding His plan and purposes. And He's doing so in your life. Shall we shrug Him off? Shall we shrink back? Or shall we instead rise up and seek by faith the purpose and plan of God? Here we find that God Almighty has been moving in our midst the great call has come forth, the voice of God from heaven calling out. Wait till all of a sudden, when God Almighty is about, when Christ is about to be revealed, what's going to take place from heaven? A shout. A shout. Have you ever tried to get someone's attention or they're leaving or maybe you'll get kids and they're walking away and you want to get their attention and you go, Hey! Hey! Right? In other words, stop what you're doing, turn around, listen to me. Yes? If you're in Britain, I've been listening to some of the British TV shows, and they always go, oi! <laughs> oi! Right? So, so how are you on board? Oi! <laughs> Hello! Hey! Psst. Right? Coming to that place where God Almighty is calling out to you. 
come. But only by the Holy Spirit. Remember John 6, 44, as Patrick talked about? The Father draws you, but will you say yes? Will you come and follow and truly learn of Him and follow after Him? Well, I think it should be go no further. You're already blown it. You're based on your own thinking and your own thoughts rather than realizing what does He say? Seeing things according to the way God sees them. Saying things according to the way God says them. Seeing, saying, and hearing according to the Holy Spirit because He has made you into a new creation in Christ Jesus. If in fact you have the Holy Spirit. If you don't, you have a, you're struggling with what I'm saying already. Faith lives by the holy calling. Faith lives in the holy calling. And it is a holy calling. That's come from heaven. The value and the importance of the call is in the one who's presenting it. The value and the importance of the call is in the one who's presenting it. It's a holy calling. It's come from the Holy One. Only the Holy One, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity can make that kind of a holy calling. No one else can. The very call that I'm giving out to you today and the charge that I'm presenting to you comes forth only by His Spirit. It's a heaven's call. How many times Paul wrote for the heaven's call, come this way, this way, imitate me, follow me, this way, this is the pattern. But there are many voices, many paths, many patterns that people choose over the... There's a lot of words out there, a lot of philosophies. Even the seductress has a voice. Come. What does it say in Proverbs? And opens the door and allows my husband's away. Come. 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 We'll enjoy. We'll enjoy. Pleasures for the day. Pleasures for the moment. And the call. Come. Come. And it says foolish. Better hope for a donkey than if that one. Walking into the adulterous home. Walking into the seductress home. The voice. Billboards are filled with it. TV. Computers filled with it. Trying to draw attention. Trying to keep you sensory and sensual. Sensory and sensual. So that you don't become divine nature. The voice is out there trying to keep you in your natural state. It's okay. It's all right. God forgives you. You'll be all right. And the devil's voice keeps speaking to you rather than this. It's a holy calling. Hear him. Trust him. And obey him in Jesus' name. It is on you to know. No one's going to get to heaven and say, Oh, I was ignorant. I, I didn't know. I, I didn't know. Why didn't you know? Why didn't you pursue? Why didn't you ask? Didn't you see the heavens? Just this past week, I was outside working at the land and looking up at the heavens, the blue sky, and I'm looking at the clouds passing and the breeze coming through, and I'm praising the Lord, and I'm praying, and I'm calling upon, and I said, Lord, what would happen if you come down and just rip this open right now? What would happen? I mean, what, think of it. This little blue bubble that everybody runs their lives like little ants all along the, all along the sidewalk. That's all we are. Human nature is nothing but little ants doing its business all around, paying no attention to what's going on. Little ants, little worms, little slugs everywhere, running around, doing your thing. Well, slugs don't do so much running, but... <laughs> but we got plenty of them too, don't we? Here, we find that you've got a holy calling that has been placed to you. You can have mom call out to the kids, no answer. Dad calls, answer. Well, that's the way it was with me. When I was growing up, mom would say something, Gary, 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 I've heard my name. You wouldn't pay attention. All of a sudden, dad goes, hey! Because I knew the next step was one of these or one of these. <laughs> right? Or the belt. You pay attention. You have uh, parents, you've seen maybe kids that they... Growing up somewhat rebellious, do their own thing, they don't pay attention to a word you say, then they go in the army of the marines and all of a sudden the drill sergeant goes and speaks. It's obey. Right? It's obedience. The call. The voice. God has not given you just some call, some commonplace call, as though friends or parents calling you, parents calling to your children this way. Friends calling and saying, no, no, this way. And you have to choose which voice. Well, God's given you a, vo given a voice from heaven saying this way, this way, this way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. This way. I am the way. Come this way. A holy calling. Kingdoms call. 
And yet the world calls all along through advertisement, magazines, books, all kinds of people, friends, TikTok, uh, social media of all kinds, all kinds of voices coming in. Just sit here, watch this TikTok, watch this Facebook, watch this LinkedIn, watch this. I don't know them all. I just hear the words. Just go to them all and spend your day just watching all of these things and chuckle and share and waste your life. Perhaps you remember a movie some time ago by Steve McQueen, uh, Papillon. The French Guiana, a true story of a prisoner taken, put into the prison house, really for not really doing that much wrong, but placed into French Guiana down by South America and swampland. You go there, you're pretty much dead. And they find that this Steve McQueen portraying the, the man, he's in the jail cell, and he's been there a long time, barely eating, barely surviving, and he's having visions, dreams, like, and, and all of a sudden he, he's crying out, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. And, and, the, and a voice is coming and saying, yes, you did. Yes, you did. What? What's my charge? What's the charge against me? And the voice comes forth and says, the squandered life. The squandered life. He goes, guilty. Guilty. The squandered life. I see men and women and kids spending their life on video games squandering the holy calling. I see men and women pursuing all things of this world and just looking for sports and for family events and looking for, for personal fun and just looking for a past the day and just trying to get some level element of escape when you're actually not listening, yielding to the holy calling. The holy calling that's come from heaven. The philosophers of the day keep calling out for your attention to follow this philosophy and follow that philosophy. But the holy calling has come forth and God Almighty has issued it by His own voice, by through His own heart, by His Holy Spirit. He sent forth the Christ, God in Christ, reconciling the world to Himself, as Scripture says. And Jesus said, Come! And the Holy Spirit says, come. And the bride says, come. Follow after, learn of him. And in this, that holy calling is calling out to you and I. God called out to Adam. Did he not? Adam fell away. Where are you? God humbled himself. God humbled himself to speak to a fallen man. Where are you? Same question that came to me even as I started coming to know the Lord. Where are you? I don't know. I'm aimless. Aimless, directionless. God called out to Noah and instructed him, build a big boat. God called out to Abraham, come out, get out of your country, get out of your father's place. God humbled himself to speak to Adam, to speak to, to Noah, to speak to Abraham. He called out to Moses and Moses replied, here I am. The first thing he hears, you're on holy ground. Holy ground. The holy calling went forth. Moses even called out to the people, the rebellious Hebrews, and he said what? Leave them. Come on this side. Whoever wants, come this way. And whoever didn't were destroyed. Yes? Rahab heard the Spirit and believed. She aligned herself with the people of God. The Lord called out to Samuel. Yes, Lord. Your servant hears. Yes? The voice of God coming from heaven, calling out to you too. A young boy, Samuel, hears the voice of God. And God has not stopped talking to young people. To the young ones. I remember I was preaching right here. Because Olivia, my granddaughter, my oldest granddaughter, she was in the womb of Sarah. And I preached, and all of a sudden I pointed to Sarah. She was sitting right with Kara's. And I pointed to her and says, even that baby in her womb. And the baby leapt in her. Olivia. And she serves the Lord today at 13 years old. But it all came easy because she leapt in the womb, so it was just easy. Or what have I been doing for the past three years? <laughs> God Almighty called out to the prophets and to the prophets. The prophets, holy men of God, were moved by the Holy Spirit and they cried out, proclaimed the word of God. A holy calling was in them, and a holy, call, a holy calling came out of their voice. Their word, their tongues were connected to the Holy Spirit. They were in the Spirit. They heard the call. Amos even writes and says, I was, I was a, a herder, a cow herder, a cattle herder, and a, and a vine dresser, and, but the call of God. 
I heard and he went up against the cows of Bashan he went up against those all that were in there and he went up against Israel and he rebuked them and said the Lord's wrath is upon you I'm sure that made him popular at the next party I'm sure that gave him a lot a lot of friends in the area and I'm sure everybody started coming and saying tell us more Amos we'd love to hear more of what's going on oh no you have the Word of God in your tongue and the only friends you'll have are those who love the Word of God but the holy calling is worth it the holy calling has come forth you must trust you must hear you must obey Christ Almighty came to the disciples and made them apostles how come I'll make you fishers of men God Almighty called out to Paul when he was still Saul and persecuting the church remember his call spoke to him Paul called out to everyone else through his letters through his preaching going into all cities say yes to the holy calling back in 1990 early 1990 very early in the year God came God came to a guy named Gary Cody 1989 I gave my life to the Lord he saved my soul and started delivering me cleaning me up and by early 1990 the call of God comes I remember being with a evangelistic crusade a Nora Lamb from China evangelist there and she looks into the crowd and she points to me and she calls me out she goes you calls me out come I come forward she goes God's got a calling on you the God's call is upon you and he's got you on the fast track from nine months being saved I'm in a Bible college and it's been a fast track and sometimes a very slow track but always always fast but sometimes those days go by slow do you understand coming to this place of recognizing that the call of God has come to every person that is coming to Timothy from Paul the holy calling don't deny it don't shrink back don't be ashamed of the testimony of Jesus Christ don't be ashamed of the gospel don't prefer your own ways don't pull away don't pull back God has not given you a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind rise up in the faith stir that faith a genuine faith stir that gift that God has given you that charisma that grace that working power of God stir that up he tells Timothy in that chapter stir it up you do it stir it up by the Spirit you're a new creation in Christ don't deny the new creation in Christ stir it up come forth in Jesus name I wonder if Lois and Eunice were excited like this son and grandson imagine them Frank and Fred no idea <laughs> right no idea but Lois and Eunice yes Timothy listen to Paul rise up praise him seek after go after Timothy's dealing with the beast of Ephesus the ones that Paul dealt with that's where he's at he's not in just some little he's in the midst of Ephesus where they're worshiping Diana he's there fighting the beast and he wants to draw back he's just a younger younger guy so easily for the older ones to dismiss him and not listen to him and he's young and he's not experienced and he didn't say it right and he's got all that going on and he's saying don't you shrink back from the face of clay you plant your feet don't you know a holy calling is upon you speak forth stand fast secure your freedom secure freedom for others fight those foes go forth see further than just your little problem you're dealing with here even Paul as he's writing this letter do you think when Paul's writing this letter he said he sees that one day Gary Cody's going to be reading it when Paul's writing this letter and to encourage correct and admonish Timothy do you think that 2,000 years later he sees me here sees you here saying someday they're going to read this letter I better get it right <laughs> oh that's probably not the right oh, what word should I use hmm what language will they use well they'll probably still be in Greek <laughs> he writes a letter not knowing how it's all gonna he's he's ministering in the spirit the spirit is the one who sees 2,000 years later and sees a guy named Gary and sees a not guy named Pat and sees a guy named Adam and sees a guy named Luke and sees a guy named Chris and sees a guy named Paul and sees a guy named Daniel sees a guy named Nate and all you two and all you two <laughs> And he also knows who's going to answer the holy calling and who's not 
And he also knows who's going to answer that holy calling. He sees Levi back there. My young grandson, two years old. Him and I are going to go at it someday. If he doesn't listen, doesn't listen, doesn't listen, oh yeah. Or go at it could just be, Levi, keep going. Just the, just the, the nudge and encouragement, this way. Right, Andrew? This way. This way. Which way? This way. Is your way this way? Is your way this way? No, it's always going to be His way. Walk His way. Live His way. God has given out His great invitation. He humbled Himself to speak to us. And He's calling for us to believe God. The proper response to the holy calling is faith. The proper response to the call of the holy calling is a genuine faith, a true faith, a faith that believes God. Well, I don't know. I'm not ready. I'm not sure. What are you talking about? I remember when the Holy Spirit came into my life and all of a sudden it was like, I, I knew truth. I could know truth. I could understand what's taking place. It's like, how could anybody not want this? Oh, you love your own affections more. You love the praise of men more. You love this more. Oh God, help me. It's true. I am that sinful. Would you help me and deliver me in Jesus' name? That bold love must come into your life. Hear me now. You must be God's gift to this generation. You must be God's gift to this generation. I am God's gift to this generation. I am. Someone could say, you say, well, that's awfully prideful to them. Prideful to you because that's your breath blowing back in your own face. It's the truth. God gave gifts to the church. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. He gave the Holy Spirit working powerfully in people's lives to be able to prophesy, to preach, to teach, to admonish, to battle, to war. For people to follow, patterns to be set. What do I want of my kids, my grandkids, their kids and their grandkids? What do I want for this church? What do I want for your children? Is that you would be God's gift to this generation. That even Nolan over here and Dalton and Samantha and Amelie, to be God's gift to this generation. Why not? Why can't they be? Why can't the Holy Spirit move where they answer with a genuine faith, where they're God's gift? Why can't Levi... Jonathan, coming forth soon. To be God's gift, Annabelle, to be God's gift, Eli, Shane, Daniel, Colin, Reed, Callan. To be God's gift to this generation. A holy calling. A holy calling. Right, Nolan? A holy calling. What am I involved with? What, am I, what, am I, what are you involved with? What are we involved in? A holy calling. As Paul wrote to Timothy, well, I'm late now, right? So it's, it's past. No, it's not past. I got breath. I got breath. Right, Margaret? I got breath. I still got breath. I got breath to praise him, breath to preach him, breath to proclaim him. Say that three times fast. And so therefore, I'm going to answer yes with a genuine faith. God, would you stir in me a genuine faith? A holy calling. I say yes. I'm going to follow after. I want that love. I want that faith. I want to be. I want to hear from Christ when he sees me. He says, beloved son. Daniel, beloved son. Sandy, beloved son. Nate, beloved son. Paul, beloved son. To hear Chris, beloved son. Right? To hear it. Beloved son. To hear it. Beloved son. To be beloved. To come to that place where we're following after him. Humbling ourselves. That's our proper response. We're not going to shrug him off. We're not going to shrink back. We're not going to shake him off as though he's nothing or I'll get it later as though we diminish it and make it just a common call. It's the holy calling. And if it's a holy calling, then he's going to make you a holy people. And he will do it with the Holy Spirit to make you holy just as he is holy. Amen. It's worth it, saints of God. Is there a cost connected to it? Absolutely. It cost you your entire old identity, your own affections, all your lust, your envy, your jealousy, all the offense that you hold on to, all the hurts. You must let go of all that junk, all this foolishness taken on place in the world today, and all this, all this biased stuff. And let all that junk go 
and rise up and live the holy calling. The holy calling. It's come from heaven. And he's doing a work in you to call, to say yes. To have godly parents over here and to go our own way to say no. Eunice and Lois stood in the faith and raised up a young man of genuine faith. Where Paul said the genuine faith. Thank God it was in Lois and it was in Eunice and I think it's in, it's in you as well. Thank God to say yes to the holy calling. It's the greatest, greatest, greatest call that there ever shall be. There is nothing greater, no one greater. There's no other voice to hear. Even the Bible says, hear him. This is my beloved son. What's he say? Hear him. Hear that Christ, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Why should I listen to that person to my right and to my left and the person who's calling here and that seductress over there and that liar and that drunk and that gamer and that one this and you don't have to do this. You have to do this. The holy calling calls for you to do so. Don't be lazy in your spiritual life, but pursue the things of God in Jesus' name. Let him do his holy work. Surrender to the Holy One of Israel. You'll be amazed what he'll do with your life so that you also hear, Beloved Son. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May the Lord of glory bless you and keep you. As Pastor Adam brings us into that next stage, what shall be our response? Pause. What is your response from here to Amelie over here to Jill over here and everyone in between to, to my granddaughter in the back with my dear daughter Lauren? Is, what is God going to do? What is my response? What if I preach the list to you and then I go my own way and do my own thing for the next 20 years? He says, well, I've done enough. Shame on me. Think God's raised me up to do fishing and golfing the rest of my life? But till this last breath, let us be beloved sons, beloved daughters of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the love come alive. Let the purposes unfold. Let the plans of God unfurl in my life. Let us be pursuers of God. The holy calling has come forth. Let us answer with a genuine faith. Shall it be with a song? Shall it be with a prayer? Shall it be an altar call? Will it be simply a yes and my steps will prove it? What shall it be? Decide this day who you shall serve in Jesus' name. May the Holy Spirit soften our hearts we can become so hard hearted so easily so quickly a callousness a disregard buying into the delusions of this world giving into the amusements of this world may the Holy Spirit soften my heart may the Holy Spirit and his love soften your heart may this church always walk with a humility may this church always come together in truth and love the sanctifying presence of the Holy Spirit who sanctifies us with truth that we would be those people that love the truth working in our lives that everybody loves to have a compliment or a commendation of good job, you're doing great but let us fall in love with the Lord's correction the correction, the chastisement that makes us into the sons and daughters of God let us have that shout in our hearts, let our tongues be connected to the Holy Spirit why have stiff necks what did stiff neck everybody get, get anybody? What is stubbornness? Why not root that puppy out? Get rid of that stubbornness. Self-will. <clears throat> Come to that place where humility runs its course in our lives. Allow the Holy Spirit, allow His mind, His thoughts, His concerns flood your soul. Become that new creation in Christ and live by the Holy Spirit, the holy calling. May the holy calling be upon each and every person. Don't leave this room. Don't leave this place. Something undone. 
Don't bring back with you those devils you've been listening to. Drop them all right here. Leave new, leave refreshed, leave empowered, leave holy for the glory of God.